You know that you are now the star, Julia. Of course. <laughs> We're all stars. <laughs> Anne is your assistant, and I am your student. So, you are the star. Mm -hmm. Or I am the star because I'm the only student. Well, yeah. Huh? I think it's more probable, Diego. If we have more students, <laughs> then I'm no longer the star, and you are the star. But now, <laughs> just one student for two teachers. It means the student <laughs> is an important one. Let, I, I will share it now. Uh, yeah, yeah, share it, please. And I'll uh, maybe have uh, Jorge to join if he's available. But Jorge can join with Hangouts. Mm. Okay, let me link and he'll join. I will. You have the link, you can share the link with him. The only issue with uh, Jorge is that uh, he already knows uh, the beginning. So <laughs> he can be a teacher too. Well, yes, at least for the first 10 lessons, yeah. So he learned where in, in Kiev or what? Uh, we started uh, with him uh, online. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, he did some homework, very, very nice one, actually. He uh, worked with uh, Duolingo. Then he found uh, some exercise books, and then uh, uh, we had some uh, role games with him, like at the coffee house or um, your lost uh, role story. Very nice one, extreme one. So tell us a little bit, Julia, about this course. What is this course about? Because I don't really know. I just saw that you know, there was such nice course with such nice teachers from Ukraine, and I said, I have to join, but has a little bit more about it. Okay, good. So uh, this course uh, will, have, will provide an opportunity to survive in Ukraine and uh, to travel in Ukraine uh, without issues, because you know that any time uh, when you travel to another country, the situation when you start speaking English or other languages and people are like, well, okay, you're a tourist, okay. I will help you. So, but, so it's like a survival guide for... Survive. But when, when a person starts speaking the language uh, of the country they're traveling to, attitude is completely different. The attitude is, oh my God, he's, he started speaking my language. Wow, I have to do anything I want. Well, what should I show? Maybe I shall give some donuts or something. This is the very first goal. And uh, the second goal, every language is the exercise for our brain. Um, have you known that um, people who speak several languages do not suffer from a lot of brain diseases like Alzheimer and so on and so forth because uh, you make it exercise all the time <laughs> yeah and there are scientific proofs of that so I believe that our course ha has two goals the first goal to survive in Ukraine and to have the best time ever in Ukraine and the second one is uh, to have your brain exercise to make you smarter and happier. <laughs> this is working really good. I have just shared this uh, um, live event on YouTube on my Facebook now, right? And your yeah. picture already appears there. It's really, really nice. Opening lecture, introduction to Ukrainian language and culture. Cool. Let us see. I will share now more more links to the Google Hangouts with other friends. You can also share them. I see that you have a colleague with you. Her, her name is um, 
Ooh, it's very difficult to read for me. <laughs> Which one? That, but her name is Tatiana. Yeah, Anna, you're definitely using someone's account. <laughs> yeah, very good. So ah, you're live it's now. It's my mother's account. I forgot to uh, use account. my account. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. So tell us, tell us, what do you think about this course? Why did you decide to to be so generous to offer this course to to international students? Uh, I think it's uh, a great opportunity to communicate with uh, foreigners, with you, Diego, with my friends all over the world. Uh, I think, uh, as Yulia has said, that it's a great exercise for our brain. And uh, um, no doubt, I think you will be glad to see us again in Spain. <laughs> in <university. laughs> we are so grateful uh, for you that you have invited uh, us a few years ago to La Coruña. It was a very nice experience and La Coruña is one of the most beautiful cities I ever seen. <laughs> but, but, but Anne, what we have to sell now is Ukraine. We have Ukraine. To Ukraine to the students. What? Okay, Where? I can tell Ukraine. So, okay. uh, I have a friend from Mexico. Yeah, I've already mentioned him, Jorge. Yes. He communicated. Uh, he was rather interested in English. But over time, when I started sharing pictures, Jorge got so excited that he was willing to spend a couple of days of his life to apply for a visa. And then uh, he actually visited Ukraine for the whole month. Is it difficult, He's very brave. Is it difficult to get a visa for Ukraine? Um, in Mexico, it's not that uh, straightforward because you need to go to the Mexico City oh. and you need to apply. For the European for residents, the European Union, do they need a visa? No, to? you don't need a visa. The European Union, uh, the US, Australia, and New Zealand, if I'm not mistaken, no visa is required, so you can come anytime. That is great then, because if we organize some some course there in Ukraine, it would be easy for people to, to get without visas, right? Yeah, no visas. But this is something new or not? Was no. it always the case that you never never needed a visa? Uh, at least for the time that I live aware, ah. uh, there was no visa required. We had a lot of clients from the European Union and from the US and uh, no issues uh, entering Ukraine. Oh no, there was one issue. Yeah, the Lithuanian guy uh, went through the Belarus country. Uh, by bus, so there you need a visa. <laughs> so he returns to Vilnius and took a plane. Yeah. Be because I, I just saw that I think it was very recently, some months, a few months yeah. ago, that that Ukraine no longer needs a visa uh, so for the EU. And, and I thought that they were reci reciprocal, that they they lifted the visas also at the same time for Ukraine, but you are telling me now that you never needed a visa. Uh, we Ukrainians needed visa. Ukrainians uh -huh. need visa to go to the European Union but previously, no, but now now they do not need it anymore. Yeah, if you if you have a biometric passport. Ah. I don't. <laughs> exactly. Is it difficult to there get? There is a little problem. <laughs> us in our countries have you, have you been recently to the eu without a visa um no not in you i've been um to cyprus without a visa <laughs> but cyprus is in the eu but maybe it's not in it's it's not in schengen you know because it's uh, yes. in cyprus they have this problem with the north of cyprus mm -hmm. That is under yes. uh, Turkish control, and, and if they join Schengen, they oh, will have to enforce the border with the north. Jorge has joined, right? Hola, Jorge. 
Привіт, Кім. Hello. Привіт. Привіт. Uh, unfortunately, I have a lot of things to do today and I'm not able to join to the whole session. I just want to say hi and I hope to see you next week because I'm really, really busy right now. That's really hard for me. Maybe a couple of lovers. Jorge, how are you doing? Can you repeat? How are you Jorge? Ah, добре. Ал тебе є справи? But that's amazing, Julia. So Jorge is from Mexico, and you say that he learned Ukrainian with you already. Так, я з Мексики. Я розмовляю трошки українською. Wow, this is amazing, Julia. So I want to take your course. Well done, Jorge, and well done, Julia, because she must be a really good teacher. That, uh, yeah, he is a really good teacher. <laughs> well, <laughs> I must say that Jorge is a very good student because he had like 70% of homework done. <laughs> so. Yeah, so probably I'm going to join to the next in the next session because right now I'm so busy. So sorry guys, but Okay, Jacko, Jacko, Jorge. Uh do встречи. Do letka. Do Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, this is working so nice. This is amazing. Julia, if we manage now more people to join like this, to, this video will look really, really nice. So tell me, Julia, you said that Jorge started with something online, right? Uh, well, we started together, actually, but... Uh, uh, then uh, he used uh, Duolingo, so this what is, that? what is that? Because I'm not familiar with that. Please explain it to us. What does it mean? Du Duolingo? This is an application. Yes. Then uh, gives the link. Just one sec. Is it for the mobile phone or what? This is for both. You can use it on both desktop and. Uh, uh, you can also use it on your mobile. And is it very expensive? It's free. But it's how free. come it's free? Who pays for it? I'm you really, know? really nice people. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the link. Uh, well, you can even just Google uh, Duolingo. Um, Ukrainian. And you can find it easily. You know oh. that you can also, you can also share your screen. We mm -hmm. made a test uh, yesterday with Ang, and it worked very well. I think we can actually start uh, doing some interesting stuff here. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, sorry? That's the idea, that we start to experiment. Yeah. So Anna has prepared a very nice presentation, uh, some facts about Ukraine. And then uh, we will start with the alphabet, some basic phrases today. Good. Yeah. So... Okay. I want to show you the pre presentation. Uh, I'll try it again. <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't work, remember I can share it for you. Oh no, uh -huh. I see myself. Uh, you see yourself? Uh, can you see oh, the presentation? Yeah, yeah. 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 nice. Oh, it works, hooray! <laughs> Yay! You can so make I it bigger now. You can make it full screen, I think. Yeah. Um, okay um full screen now but i want also yeah, to yeah. see the I, I, on, on the lower side mm -hmm. i think there's a symbol there to to make it full screen to yes yes do you see yes yeah. very mm -hmm. good <laughs> <laughs> i called my presentation uh 10 interesting facts about ukrainian language um, here you can see a picture and there is a question there. Говориш українською? Так. 
It means, do you speak Ukrainian? Yes. Um, <clears throat> The, uh, the facts is those. The first fact that uh, modern Ukrainian language uh, has uh, a great amount of words. It is about 256,000 of words. So uh, the conclusion is that Ukrainian language is very rich language. And about 46 million people around the world speak Ukrainian language. Here you can see uh, our girls in national costumes. Yes, do you see them? Yes, I, yes. Nice selling point, Anna, nice selling point. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's our national uh, costumes. So it's a uh, Ukrainian fest and uh, it takes place in Kiev. You can see uh, the third. Uh, the third fact, uh, the, the longest word in Ukraine, I've tried, <laughs> I've tried to read it. Dichloridopentyl uh, trichloromethan. It's a very, very long word, the longest one in Ukrainian language, and uh, it is the name of a pesticide. <laughs> and we have good news. You don't have to learn it. Most words are short. Yes, most words are short. Yes, Julia, thank you. Um, the most often used letter is O, because the Ukrainian language is very melodical language, so we pronounce, uh, pronounce everything with O, R. Uh, so uh, the most often used letter is O, as I said. Uh, most of our words uh, begin on the letter uh, P, Ukrainian P. Uh, Julia, can you remember some words on pair? <laughs> Diego, a word that starts with P. I, I, do, I don't know. I, I think I started the first lesson of this book and P was not included. So I learned all the words that start with other letters. No way. I've heard one from you that starts with Maybe Papa. Oh, that's Papa. Papa. It means bye-bye. Yes. Uh, and one more. Privit. Ketchup. Privit. You are right. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, there are two uh, specific... Um, there is one specific letter in Ukrainian language. It is G. We have... Exactly, we have two letters that means G. Uh, G and H. <laughs> you left. Please help me to pronounce it. Maybe you can uh, do this better. H and G. So, so you... my name is Diego. 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 Yes. Not Diego, but Diego. Yes. Diego. Like uh, San Diego in California. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, good. We used in some. Uh, we use very rare, but there are some words with good. Uh, gruz, gedzu, uh, ganza. Так, Юля, це дуже такі специфи специфічні слова. The country, the country, the last one means uh, marijuana, by the way. Wow. How do you say Greece? Grecia. Grecia, it's with G. Grecia. The thing is, uh, when you are pronouncing G that you have in the Spanish and in the English language, it's um, uh, higher, it's like G. But when you pronounce H, you just open your throat and the, the, the uh, sound goes really deep. It's like H, H. Like when you're Breath in very hard, like, and then, can you can you try, it, Diego? Yes, yes, for us it's very easy to say the yeah. yeah, because uh, it's it's in our local dialect. We also pronounce the the g sound like that. We 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 call it heada, and it's a it's a way to pro a local dialect way to pronounce in, you, in, in Galician language. Could you repeat, please? Because I'm not sure that this is the same. The viejo, viejo, 
another one. This is H. <coughs> this is H? Yes. I don't know. So, so how is it then? Did you hear Ho? Did you Go? Who? And Who? But 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 do you do you write the ye go or the ye ho? The ye ho. Ho. The first variant, this one. The ye ho. Ye ho. So this is like h. It's very similar to h you're saying, but it's um, uh, sound. It's uh, it has voice. It's not only um, noise but also voice. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, that's better. <laughs> it, uh, it turned out to be the most. By little, I think it's by imitation. It will be easier. Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, this this very sound. Uh -huh, it took uh, Jorge maybe he started pronouncing it by the end of his journey, by the end of the month. It turned out to be the most difficult for the Spanish speaker. We started with the most difficult scenes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> let's continue, okay? Yeah, let's do it. Yes. Uh, in Ukrainian language, <laughs> there is one specific case. It is a calling case. I tried uh, to call it calling case. It means that um, Yulia, for example, Julia, uh, Yulia, Yulia, but when we call her, we say Yulia. Yulia, or just Yulia. Um, Yulia. Yulia. For example, my name is Anne. Uh, Anya. Anya on Ukrainian. And uh, uh, when somebody wants to call me, uh, he can say Anyu. Anya. Anyu. Yulia. Yulu. Ola, Olu, Natalia, Natalu. Uh, it's uh, it were names uh, of girls, and uh, um, the calling case uh, is a specific case in our language, Diego. <laughs> so is it is it like a, because you know I saw some videos about the greetings in Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. in some videos they say Dobri Rano. And in other videos, they say Dobro Horantu. Uh, it is what also a calling, calling case, right? A calling case uh, is uh, uh, connected only with names, only with names. Mm -hmm. well, when, for example, I'm talking to Anna, mm -hmm. and I want something from Anna, I use this um, case, I say, Anya. Could you please do something for me? Or, mm -hmm. uh, Anya, it's nice to see you. So very often um, it doesn't change. For example, for your name, Diego, as it is the uh, name from another language, yeah? So it is not changed. It will be the same, yeah. I'll just say Diego, Diego. Привет. But for Anya, I will say Anya, привет. And for Julia, you say Julio? Yes. Yes. Good. Good for you, Diego. <laughs> uh, eight. Uh, in Ukraine, we have reducing forms, a lot of reducing for forms. Uh, for example, uh, little, when we say little, maleńki. In Ukrainian, it's maleńki, uh, but uh, it is have a reducing form, malesenki. Uh, there is Affix ink, so uh, it is uh, reducing form. There is uh, a very nice language and uh, the German language. So in Mexico, when you come, you say uh, you hear all the time un poquito. Mm -hmm. like, uh, um, um, everything will be with this ito, with diminutivo. Yeah? And the Ukrainian language also loves it, like in Mexico. In German, uh, also you have like a cat's hen, like a little cat, like not only a cat, like in English. 
Right. It doesn't matter whether it's a cute cat or not cute cat, it will be a cat, yeah? But in Ukrainian, you have kit and kuatik, like, oh, cat's hen, gatito. Uh, thanks, Anna. And are they very yeah. difficult to, to make these diminutives in, in Ukrainian or not? Uh, it's very, very similar to, to the Spanish language. So you just learn a couple of them and very often you can use different suffixes for the same word. And this way we have a lot of um, variants. So it's easy and beautiful because you do not repeat yourself. Ukrainians are so kind that sometimes we use this uh, suffix with the word enemy. Vorov, We only, we even use um, reducing and kerosene form with such uh, uh, words like enemy. <laughs> Good. What, what, what do you have uh, then? I'm very interested. Uh, the ninth fact. Uh, that the origin of the um, important Ukrainian words, uh, uh, so Ukrainian language is very ancient to start with. Uh, it was formed uh, in the in 10 millennium. Um, uh, so uh, some some of the Ukrainian words uh, uh, has the origin in Sanskrit. What what is that? Sanskrit is something from from the Jews or something or what? So basically, um, the main idea is that the Ukrainian language it goes derives directly from the uh, ancient Slavic language, and ancient yeah. Slavic language goes directly from the Indo-European language. That's why uh, you will find a lot of words similar in Spanish and Ukrainian, in German and Ukrainian. And uh, that's why it is uh, nice to learn this language because... The main idea is that you will learn the, our language easily. <laughs> and is, it, is it similar to Polish or to Russian or to other languages? Ukraine is uh, the most similar language to Ukraine is Belarusian, then Polish, but not Russian. Russian is uh, on the another branch of Slavic language. Only about 40% uh, uh, of words is similar with Russia, but about 80% of words is similar with Belarusian language. Oh, I see. Russian is more similar to Bulgarian. Yes. There are a lot of uh, words that are similar in Bulgarian and Russian. Mm -hmm. but of course, in Ukraine, you can get around with Russian easily because of the history. Yes, so that a lot of people, especially over the older age, they speak uh, yeah. Russian very fluently. Because of the former Soviet Union. Yeah. So, as the next fact that uh, Ukrainian language is one of the most beautiful languages in the world. Uh, it was a contest which uh, took place, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in 1934 in Paris. Yes, Yulia, I'm not mistaken? <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm correct. Uh -huh. And uh, Ukraine... Um, <clears throat> Ukraine was chosen to uh, one of the most melodic languages. I guess it was the third prize because the first prize uh, was Italian, then it was um, uh, French language, then Ukrainian, and then Persian language. I see. So, is there a lot of music in Ukrainian? Uh, not music but the world we pronounce the role the roles like a melody the intonation is like a melody like a song but you diego are also right because uh, the ukrainian folk uh, was once rated after italian um unfortunately now it's not the truth anymore because of really really hard history when People could be killed for a Ukrainian song, but um, mm, as a student of a Ukrainian department who learned a lot of folk songs as a homework, stuff like um, 
Да, 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 да. It's from Ukrainian folk. Yes, it's yeah. From... So this this is very popular in the U.S., but initially it's a Ukrainian carol song, and it is sung in in, in the Ukrainian language, like. Uh, um, yeah, maybe someday we'll learn it. it maybe one of our last lessons. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, oh, the nice. composer made it very popular in the U.S. This way, everybody knows it now. Uh, Leontovich, I guess. Yes, it was uh, or, or who? Kosice. So that uh, Kosice was the composer who uh, orange mm -hmm. um, in the U.S. already, and then uh -huh. it got really popular at that time. Now, how is it possible that you yeah. know so much about the, the the Ukrainian language history? I learned it at the university. At school. Wow, but you know, it's it's you know, it's not just like learning a language. So this course is not only a course in, in the Ukrainian language, it's also Ukrainian culture, isn't it? Of course, we're gonna make it very funny and interesting. <laughs> but this course being online, I don't know, because there are some other courses in languages where you have the food of the different countries and you eat there and so on. We don't, we, how can we do that online? Maybe we could make some party, some some course party, some party online. Sorry? Maybe we could organize some Ukrainian party online with U Ukrainian food, with Ukrainian music. <laughs> That's a nice idea. But this idea was my pleasure. Yeah, we'll try to make every lesson a small party. So, how long does it take to speak uh, Ukrainian as uh, as as good as um, Jorge? Uh, depends on how much time you dedicate. I think that if you dedicate uh, at least fifteen minutes a day for another two months, uh, you'll be quite good. I can't believe that, you know, I think you need years to speak like Jorge. No way. Jorge can prove it next lesson. Yes, because, you know, I, I, I studied other languages in the past and usually you study the language for maybe for, for three years or five years and you are not able to speak as much as Jorge. And they are much easier languages. Um, it's not Chinese, but we should be honest with you, it's not English as well. So, yes. uh, this is uh, the near Polish, and the Polish language is considered the most difficult in uh, among the European languages. I mean, among the uh, Indo-European languages. However, uh, fortunately, we are living in the modern world, when we have a lot of apps, when we have a lot of interactive methodics of how to learn languages, and it's much easier than it used to be before. So that's that's not a big deal. Uh, you know, I, I ordered the textbook today. This uh, Shifchuk's books, I ordered it today because I, I was reading the this um, scanned uh, copy the online copy of the book, but he, there some you could not read it very well in some in some places. It's not very good, and I say the language is already difficult enough. <laughs> so maybe I, I should get the book fast so that I start learning. But I started doing the homework and studying with the first uh, the first lesson. It takes a long time because it's it, it's just 14 pages, but it takes it takes I, I don't know I, I I think that book is designed for a very long course, maybe a one year long course. Yes, and it's hard to learn by uh, yourself. Because wow. 
the, the more fun you have, the easier you learn the language. But you have prepared a lot for this course. Of course. You have presentations for everything. This so, is what I really wanted to learn, the, the, the greetings in Ukrainian. So let's, let's have let's, it. Yeah. <laughs> So, how to say greeting in Ukrainian? You just say Vitanya. Vitanya. Yes, Diego, you're right. It's very uh, similar to Enya in Spanish. Vitanya. Yeah, Vitanya. That's good. We're doing really good. Okay, the uh, easiest one. Oh, how can I get rid of this height scene? One sec. One sec. Uh, just don't want to have this uh, message on my presentation. Do you see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So, see this bear? He's so relaxed, right? He's like, hello, how are you? Yeah. So when you're using informal language, when you want to greet a bear, you say easily, you say just Privit. Maybe Diego knows this word. Privit. <laughs> oh, no accent, by the way, Diego. Very nice. Privit. So I, in I my... want to have, you know, I want to have a Bukovina accent. Because <laughs> what I want to learn, the Bukovina accent. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm the best, the best person. <laughs> do, do, do they have an accent there? Oh, they have such a hard accent there. Wow. Such a hard accent that sometimes we don't understand what they say. Yes, you will You yeah. will see that I, what I learned here, I will practice it immediately there. And, and soon I will have a Bukovina accent. <laughs> Good. You you will you will bring it up to the group, right? Yes. You know this 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 video, this uh, presentation of the course is working so well, I believe, that I was a bit skeptical about the these uh, students for this course. But after this such powerful start that we are having today, I think that we will be have the room full of students and uh, it will be difficult we will have to make a selection <laughs> okay we'll try to choose the best ones yes okay so we've said hello to our bear uh now we can say papa bear yeah bye 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 papa papa <laughs> And the next step is a bit more challenging. Diego, are you ready to have more challenging words? In your yes, brain? I can read them already because, you know, I made my homework. Cool. And I can read that. Let's give it a try. So how do you say good morning in Ukrainian? You, what you have written there is Dobry Ranok. Wow. Bravo. Dobry Ranok. But what we say is Dobro Horanku. Yes. You can say uh, but is this more like in, in Bukovina or what? Is there a difference in, in the different regions? No, you can use both variants. Dobro Horanku, it uh, means I wish you good uh, uh, morning. I wish you Dobro Horanku, it is in a case. Uh, but when you uh, do not say uh, I wish you, ja tobi bazhaju, I say only uh, Dobry Ranok. Dobry it is no Ranok. Nominative case uh, Dobry Ranok. Dobry Ranok. Good, it's, e it's easier. Dobry Ranok. Yes, it's a good, good one to start. <clears throat> and the most popular, actually. Dobry Ranok. Good afternoon. Dobry den. Wow, this one you pronounce like a real Ukrainian because we just we don't say just Dobry den. Dobry den. Dobry den. 
Or we can say also um, Dobroho dnia. Yes, I wish you Dobroho dnia. I saw a video on YouTube. It's a, it's a, it's a Ukrainian girl dressed in, in typical Ukrainian dress. And mm -hmm. she teaches all the greetings, yes? And she says, Dobroho dnia. <laughs> You're doing a very nice intonation. Yes, because I imitate her. I don't know where she's from. I don't know what region she's from, but she speaks like that. Nevertheless, all, all regions, uh, people from all regions will understand you uh, if you say Dobroho dnia or Dobry day. Both variants. Good. How do you say good evening when the sun is... Uh going to rest Dobry večer. Dobry večer. perfect you're doing very nice e. like but, Dobry. But, very nice very nice but who, who, this this girl she says yeah that I like the, you know, there's also one course on YouTube. It's by a Ukrainian, it's, he's called Roman. Mm, Roman. Yeah, and his course is called the Ukrainian Boot Camp, I think, or something like that. And it's really good, you know, he, he teaches like that. But when I saw that in some videos, they said uh, Dobry Ranok, and in other videos they say Dobro Ranku, I started to to um, to be concerned because I thought that maybe there were different dialects or something, and it was not like um, you know a, a standard language for Ukrainian. But then they explained to me that it's just the difference in the case. Yeah. And both of them are correct, and it's not a question of dialect. Yes. Yeah, that's totally true. This was very important for me because, you know, in Spain there are some regional languages that have not been used for for many years and never had like a, a proper grammar and mm -hmm. people speak the same language in many different ways. And even the, the grammar changes from time to time because they are rebuilding it now. Mm -hmm. And, and I was worried whether Ukrainian would be the same, but they, they told me, no, Ukrainian has a very clear grammar and that pe people, you know, this Dobry uh, Ranok and Dobro Horanku, they are both belong to the same language and they are both correct. And that is true. So, now we want to ask this cat how he's doing. Uh, Diego, do you remember how to say? How are you doing? How are you doing? I don't remember, but I can read it now. <laughs> okay, good. So, can you read, please? Jak spravi? Jak spravi? Jak spravi? Jak spravi? Uh, one thing that you can uh, improve although they already understand you if you say it like that. When you were using Dobry Ranok, you pronounced this, this sound e, in a perfect way. E. E. Jak spravi. Less um, suave, less uh, soft. Jak spravi. 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 Jak spravi. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes, probably. So, uh, literally, it means how, yak. Yak is how, and spravi is uh, like matters, things, uh, the stuff you do. Yes. Yes, but Julio, you know what I learned? I I can I can say one sentence about this picture. I can say. Take it. Take it. <laughs> Take it. 
<laughs> ah, yeah, cat is kit. Kit. Yes. Very good. Very nice kit. Harney kit. Right. Okay, another and and below Yak Sprava you have another way to ask how people are doing. Can you read it please? Yakti? Yakti. Yakti. Very good. This one is very good. Your sound e is perfect here. So it means uh, how are you? Literally. And uh, it's easier to translate with German or Spanish here because um, uh, we are using an informal version. Formal is it's the same like do. Do. For example, yeah, it's uh, the same like do in uh, German. It is informal. So when I'm talking to you, Diego, if we were in Ukraine, uh, okay. most probably we would use a formal uh, version. Formal version is very popular here. Even if, the per if you don't know the person or, or the person is slightly older than you, you're likely to use the second version. Can you read it, by the way? Yakvi? Yakvi, exactly. We. This is uh, Z. Yeah? So this is more formal. And in Ukraine, formal is uh, more widespread than in Spanish, for example. When I'm talking to a student at the university, I would use V. When I'm talking to um, a saleswoman at the shop, I will use V. But when I'm talking to Anna, for example, or to my mom, I will use T. Anna, jak ty? Dobre, dziękuję, Julia. Jak ty? Też dobre, dziękuję. Bywaj. Diego? So apparently we are on the next slide now. Yeah, so when you're asked how are you doing, the most standard answer will be Dobre. Good, I'm good. I'm fine. Thank you. But if you're really good, you can say Chudova. Chudova. Yeah. One more time, Chudova. please. Chudova. Perfect. So, I'm great. Chudova. I'm not just fine, I'm great. I'm Chudova. My sprava Chudova. Before, when we saw the cat, you, you also said the cat was nice, was beautiful, and you you said ha harnik. Harni. 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 You always yes, harna. Harna means uh, mostly beautiful. Mhm. Mm Good. Okay. Dobre. Sometimes. Um, not everything is dobre or chudova. Sometimes uh, something can go not very good. Something can go bad. So in this case, we say pohano. 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 Exactly. Exactly. And Ukrainians love complaining. Um, so they say that um, I've heard that. Um, they said that in Germany they like complaining, in uh, the Netherlands they like complaining. Maybe it's about all the uh, all the peoples all around the world. But in Ukraine, very often we are um, when we are asked how we are doing, uh, it's not just a formality for us. We really care how we are doing. So if you don't feel very well, we say it as it is. We can say pohano. So it's a normal answer. But the next thing you can have be why, why Pohano? And you yeah. have to answer. <laughs> Pohano. Yes. Yes, I, I saw also one video on YouTube and they said the things that you should never do in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they said that you should never ask people in Ukraine, how are you? Be because they, they say that if you ask, uh, how are you in Ukraine? It's not like in English that you say, hi, how are you? And they say, fine, thanks. No, that they can answer you and they can tell you their lives. Yes. And they, they expect you to listen to them. Yeah, but on the other hand, I think that this is something interesting about us because, uh, again, it's not a formality. So when I'm asking how Anna is doing, I really care. And uh, I don't expect necessarily to say, to hear that she's fine. And if she's bad, maybe I, I would like to advise her something. Or to so, help. Yeah, or to help. So this is something particular. They say that uh, in Ukraine, people um, smile less when you don't know them. That's true. But as soon as you know the people, um, they will open to you. They will open to you and uh, you can easily become a friend. Yeah, so we know about the northern um, peoples, for example, that they're closed, they're closed culture. It's hard to get the chance to have a beer with them if you're a foreigner. But in Ukraine, if you get to know people, they will do their best to, um, to befriend you. And this is nice for tourists in Ukraine. So when Jorge, for example, visited Ukraine, and as soon as he started speaking Ukrainian, by the way, very often he got some Ukrainian food. Uh, he got some help. He was treated when he didn't have cash and uh, he tried to order coffee and to pay with card and they didn't have a terminal. They just, uh, they just gave the coffee for free. <laughs> so, oh, Ukraine, we are very, very hospitable. Yeah. So I, I think it's a nice country. So you said that so many people speak uh, Ukrainian in the world, but how many people are there now in Ukraine? It is about 39 or 38 million people in Ukraine, and uh, there is a big diaspora all over the world, especially in uh, Russia and in Canada. And in Australia, by the way. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in Russia, you can hear a lot of people speaking Russian with a Ukrainian accent. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you can hardly find people speaking Ukrainian there because... because you know why. But in Canada, in the US, in Australia, the diaspora is more... They have their hands untied and that's why you can have such a nice exercise book like uh, the one by Shevchuk. Yeah, he's, he belongs to the Ukrainian It's diaspora. from Harvard, from the United States, right? Yes, yes. Cool. And they even have the um, uh, boards there in Harvard. So there are some summer schools uh, for Ukrainian language, by the way. You can even apply for scholarship. I guess it's mostly for students. But I've heard that uh, some of my peers, they went to the US, <laughs> to Harvard, summer school to learn Ukrainian. But if I wanted to learn Ukrainian, I would rather go to Yulia's summer school in, in Kiev. Of course, but maybe for some people uh, who are um, working at another side of the ocean, it can be easier. So. I think it's good. Both are good. I would use any opportunity if, if I were to learn Ukrainian. Okay, back to business, right? Sometimes it is very often when we want to say that everything is okay, everything is normal. We answer normalno. Normalno. Normal. And there are informal versions, uh, like uh, a shortened one, norm. Norm. Perfect. And another one is, okay. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> this is super informal. This is almost slam. Okay. So if you use it in Ukraine, uh, the people will understand that you are really interested in, in Ukraine, <laughs> if you know this. <laughs> okay, so um, um, Anna, let's imagine that today um, you're not perfect because, you know, it, it was not a sunny day. But you're also mm -hmm. not bad, you're okay. So if I answer you, uh, Anu, jak ty? Julia, ja normalno. W mene vse dobre. Okay, good. And... Uh, yeah. A jak ty? Jak twoje sprawy? Takie. Takie. Many in village always says, takie. <laughs> If we add some accent here, yeah, it will be like Yeah, <laughs> like an accent. If you say in Ukraine, take care, you, you will be real Ukrainian. <laughs> oh, good. So, Diego, let's imagine that you're also not perfect, but not bad today. Yakov, uh, Diego. Take <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> You're nailing it. <laughs> okay, so this one we've already heard. Yes, al utebe. So when we asked Anna, she answered that she was dobre, abo takie, abo normalno. And then Anna answer, uh, asked me back. She said, al utebe, a jak ty? Tak? So, uh, Diego, let's give it a try. So, I will ask how you're doing, and then you ask me. Um, Diego, jak sprawy? Normalno. A u tebe? Uh, a u mene dobre. Dziękuję. Good. So, now we'll have some role games. Um, so now Anna will be a queen. Oh, <laughs> she needs to be a queen. Uh, and you, Diego, I'm sorry, but you're a poor villager. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and you're having a conversation in a boring afternoon of the 18th century. Your goal now is to greet each other and ask how each other is doing. Okay? Okay. Good. Let's, let's have it started. Apparently, poor villager has to start. Dobry den. Jak vy? Julia, to me treba čitati, abo me ne treba vidpovedati. You answer. Answer the other. Uh, Dobry den. Uh, Privit. U mene vse dobre. A jak ty? Normalno. <laughs> maybe, maybe even Pohano, but a poor villager is a modest man. <laughs> He's very optimistic, poor villager. <laughs> yeah. So now you both are students, you're friends, and you meet to go to a bar. Privit. Privit. Jak ty? Mm, Takie. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice, uh, perfect answer for a student. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ask Anna how she's doing. Um, I don't remember. I, I, uh, mm, Just uh, at, at out, 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 out. Аня, як тебе питали? Ага, в мене трошки поміхи пішли, я не, не, не почула. А, добре, дякую. Дякую, добре, дякую. Добре. Я вчу дуже багато. Sorry? Я вчу дуже багато сьогодні в цьому курсі. Знаєш? Це дуже опасно. 
because you, you say that you know you, you teach me some things that they say that they are funny that they are informal and then we i will now practice all of them the formal ones the informal ones you see <laughs> okay i think it, it it works well because you're also having a very nice um desire to learn good so now diego you are a son imagine you're i don't know 15 years old and anna is your mother and you want her to buy you a new car and it's an early sunny morning how would you approach anna and, and she's my mother yes and I say, Privit. Dobry ranok. Dobry ranok. Dobry ranok, synu. Jak twoji sprawy? Dobry, dziakuju. A u tebe? У мене добре, дякую. Нормально, все нормально. Це нормально. Я не знала, що ти будеш купляти машину. She said she didn't know about the car, so it was first first it was добре, but apparently a bit later it will be just нормально. Okay, good. Uh, now the things will get weird. So now you're a boyfriend and a girlfriend, so you should be 100% informal. Mm -hmm. However, maybe you should get a bit formal because one of you broke another's car. Dobry mm večer. -hmm. Apparently, Anna broke the car. That's why I thought. Dobry večer, Diego. Dobry večer, Anna. Jak twoje sprawy? U tebe wsze dobre. Wsze dobre? Nie. Pochano. Pochano? You know about the car, yeah? Because Anna broke my car. Takie. Okay, so now, now Diego, it's your start time. You're Chuck Norris. Mm. And, and is it in the evening, in the morning, during the day? No matter when, you Chuck Norris, nothing else matters. Dobry den, Mr. Chuck Norris. But you are Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> it's your start time. Jakby. Jakby. Duże dobre. Harno. Cudowo. Ja wybaczę. I like uh, I'm playing Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> She's a good actress. She she could be a voice actress. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, jak twoje sprawy, Chuck Norris? Dobre, dziękuję. A a u tebe? U mnie? Cudowo, harno. Прекрасно. Means great. Dobro means great, right? Yes. Прекрасно also means means great. Добре means great. Prima. Is it very dark there now? Yes. It is. It is still day here. Already, it's in Ukraine. It's already a добрый вечер. It's yes. Well, here it's also Dobry Vecchio, but it's still, it, there's still light outside. Mm 
No, no, it is uh, a deep night in Ukraine. I will show you. Can you see? Yes, yes. But here it's much different, you know, it's like a oh, wow. day. Yes, it was like in Spain. <laughs> Probably Mexico, Jorge didn't show us, but probably there it was much sunnier. Great. Diego, are you tired? No. Eh, ni. Ni. Dużo dobre. Dużo dobre. Ni. Eh, um, um, chudovo. Можемо продовжувати, Юля, в тебе ще є слайди? Uh, I think that this is the perfect time for our quiz about Ukraine. Yes. I, I don't want to start with the alphabet, although we have a very nice song about the alphabet, but I would like us to start with it with all the students. Mm -hmm. So I will save it. Mm -hmm. the, do not open all our, all our cards. Of course, of course. But you know, I tell you that what, what you have done today is something exceptional. It is something like, uh, you know, I don't know how this will work, but uh, in one way or another it will work. Maybe you will become millionaires. Guys, <laughs> can you see my slides? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it is a short quiz. Diego, uh, it's for you. Uh, there will be three variants and one question. Please, Diego, match the map of, of Ukraine. Where is Ukraine here? The first, the second, or the third? And Ukraine. It is, it is the first. The first, good for you. The next question. It's especially weird because the second one was the country that the yeah, other. You know, this map, this map of Ukraine. Can you put it again, Anna? Yes. Here, I see yeah. that Odessa. Odessa. You write it with two S. No. No, only it is one. The people they write it just with one. Odessa. Good for you, right? In Ukrainian, it is one as because because it is a Russian map. On I Russian see. So you teach me Ukrainian with a Russian map. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I try to make uh, my quiz uh, more difficult. That's why I use Ukrainian map with Russian language, uh, Spanish map with uh, Ukrainian language, and. Uh, Deutschland, uh, German map with German language. Wow. <laughs> so he was trying to confuse you. Yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. The next question. Please uh, say, where are Ukrainian people? The first variant, the second variant, and the third variant. The third one. The third one. Yes. And have you decided uh, which one this and this? I don't really know. Mm -hmm. This one, uh, Norwegian. Norwegian, really? Yes, really, really. I also uh, was very excited about that fact. There are national Norwegian costumes. Mm -hmm. Yes, very beautiful girls. <laughs> I also tried, tried to confuse you with such beautiful girls. <laughs> Because Ukrainian girls are also beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that next one. Uh, it's not modest, apparently. <laughs> Who well, was what is this in, in, in I don't know in, in in Kazakhstan or something or where is that? I don't know. Uh huh. Yes, uh, very near. It is Georgian. Ah, Georgia, and they, they are like. Tartars or something or what? Mm, no. Where are they from? Yeah. Not really. Tartars are uh, a Turk, Turk um, people, and uh, they are not quite uh, related to the Georgians, to the Caucasians. No, still, no, it's just Western. 
Yeah, so those are Eastern. Eastern. But uh, yeah, it depends, of course. Mm -hmm. The next criteria. Ukraine, for those who are hungry in the evening, uh, please match the Ukrainian national dish. <laughs> the first one, this, this, or this. Ah, the first one. The, the, the first one. Do you, you know this? You should bosh. Yeah. Good for you. Oh, I even didn't hope that you know this name, Borsh. It's very pleasant for us. Yes, Julia. It is Borsh uh, with smetana here. Mm -hmm. Salo. Salo, it is uh, lark. And cebula, onion. Ah, cebula. Cebula. Mm -hmm. Yes. Here is pizza. Everybody knows. Yes, Italian national dish. And this, Diego, please say us what this is. Paella. Paella. <laughs> By the way, I should say that uh, Jorge loved borscht so much that he's gonna cook it by himself in, in uh, Mexico. Mm -hmm. No, he never cooks. I, 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 I knew borscht already because in, in, in Romania they also eat uh, borscht. And, mm -hmm. and they also put, uh, how do you call it, smetana? Smetana, yes. Smetana. In, in, in Romania they call it smetana. Mm -hmm. and it, it, ah, very similar. Yes, very similar. It, it, it's like not cream. It's more like a Greek uh, yogurt. Sour cream. Yes. And uh, um, actually, you can find borscht uh, in uh, Poland, in uh, Hungary, in uh, Slovakia, <coughs> in Russia. And uh, th this is a very, very widespread dish. And what is really nice about borscht is that every um, cook prepares it in some special way because it has so many ingredients. You make a small change there to borscht and borscht uh, has a different, uh, different taste. For example, uh, my granny cooks borscht with garlic. My mother do not, uh, doesn't do it. <laughs> so how do you say garlic in Ukrainian? Kasnik. 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 Uh -huh, like Che Guevara. Kasnik. Kasnik. Mm -hmm. Yes. And onion, you say cibula? Cibula. So see, it's easier for Spanish in this case, yeah? With smetana it was easier for uh, the Romanian and yeah. with, with cebulla it's easier for the Spanish-speaking people. Because exactly, so... Cebolla, cebulla, mm -hmm. very similar. If, if, if I knew Polish, probably it would be much easier. Oh, yes. We can understand Polish, so... Yes. Yeah, I never learned it, but when I went to Poland, I could uh, communicate with the Polish. Uh, we spoke Ukrainian, they spoke Polish. And once we even picked up a Polish guy on blah blah car. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, it's easier. So after Ukrainian, it's easier to learn Polish as well. You just mm -hmm. add more uh, ship to ship. Sure, there. It gets easy. Easy, easy. Mm -hmm. Yes, the next. Last one. Please uh, find out the Ukrainian sportsman. And my. This one or this one? Klitschko. Klitschko, Vladimir Klitschko, yes. We oh, have to oh, Vladimir, this is not Vitali, yes? What? This is Volodymyr, it's not Vitali. Yes, it is Volodymyr Klitschko. Because his brother 
Vitaly is not only a very nice boxer, but also a mayor of the uh, uh, Kiev city. Mm -hmm. He's politician. Oh. Yeah. But so, so he's an oligarch. Mm, yes. <laughs> All Ukrainian <laughs> politicians. Well, actually, I should say that uh, uh, apparently the boxers are not the best mayors, but his team is quite good. Uh -huh. They have much better role. Now in Kyiv, I think it's about 60% of them uh, recovered. The city gets more and more beautiful. So uh, it's more and more attractive. And what for has TV. happened recently in, in Ukraine? Because I, I have some Facebook uh, friends who yeah. share some news. But uh, I'm, I'm worried because... Mm -hmm. I think some of those may be fake news. You know that some, now this the, they say that some uh, people in Russia they are distributing fake news on, on on Facebook, and I don't really know if they are fake or they are true. But they 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 <coughs> talked about some kind of um, conflict between Yatsenyuk. And Poroshenko. Is there a conflict now between them? Because they say that they put someone in jail or something, and uh, it was a friend of Yatsenyuk, so and they have a conflict now. But I don't know if this if this is true or how is Ukrainian politics now? Like Santa Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> So if you want to uh, follow the Ukrainian politics, uh, you're probably you probably should like soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I think Yatsenyuk is, is from Chernivtsi, isn't he? Yes. I think he's from there, and he was there in the Maidan, in the initial uh, demonstration. These moments, he was there. But now I think Poroshenko is having a conflict with the people from Maidan. Well, actually, Yatsenyuk uh, was... Yatsenyuk joined at about the same time as Poroshenko, because yes. initially on Maidan there were no politics at all. Common people were initials of uh, Maidan. Yeah. And common people are not now in the Ukrainian yes. politics. There was a very famous one in Maidan from uh, from Lviv. His name was Parasyuk. Yes. But he became politician after... Bolo, Volodymyr, Volodymyr Parasyuk, right? Yes, right. Yes, Volodymyr Parasyuk. But now... Yeah, is a member of uh, Ukrainian politician team and that means that uh, all aims of Maidan are spoiled. He spoke so well there on Maidan, he did it so so well that I really thought he he was a C, C, uh, CIA agent. Or... <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Because he did it so well, he did it so professionally, you know, like a professional actor wouldn't do it as well. He was really good. I wanted to invite him to Coruña. Really? Parasyuk, yes. Why? He, he, because I wanted him to participate in some summer courses or something, but he, he was already very famous and he was already in the army. He, he, he was like a poster boy for the Ukrainian army mm -hmm. and uh, he would not come to, you know, to the other extreme of Europe. He, mm -hmm. he was busy there. <laughs> yeah. Ah, by the way, I have another question for you because this is also about culture, right? Okay. So, so the, my question is about... Um, there are some videos on YouTube. Probably, I don't know if you have seen them or not. It's about an American. He's called, his, uh, his name is Texas. 
and he makes some videos, propaganda videos, like uh, from uh, Donetsk and Luhansk, that saying that he's fighting with the with the local armies there. Have you have you seen those videos? No. He's he's very famous. He has lots of views. You know, he's and he's American from Texas. And he he I mean if Parasuk was good, I think this one is also good. You know? Like Parasuk was CIA and this must be FSB. <laughs> yes. yes, it's good. Very, very nice. Nowadays we have so many things. You know what? On our website where you have your course now. It's a possibility for us, if you want to include your videos, any videos that you like, you can include them. And you can also include like questions, like um, some kind of discussion questions, if you like. Yes, yeah, we definitely do it. And, uh, for you can even include also a multiple choice tests, if you like. Good. So we have different options there and uh, if you want to try them we can you know but uh, what i tell you you know i am now objective you are the teachers i'm the student and i'm seeing you and i'm telling you that this is amazing i have watched all the ukrainian videos on youtube i have searched all of them and i have never seen something like this this is amazing what you are doing today. Dziękujemy, Dia. Dziękujemy. No, very, very nice to hear. Bardzo przyjemne. It's true. Now we will have to to make a um, reklama. You, do you say reklama in Ukrainian? Yes, yes. reklama, exactly. And uh, we we try to promote it on our Facebook. We will already have a video to share with people. Yes, mm -hmm. and I think this will be good and we can think of a, there was a student from Spain, she was very interested because she, she has already started studying this kind of uh, Slavic languages, yes, like Russian, Ukrainian and uh, she knows already much more than me, she knows the alphabet, she knows oh, wow. But, and she was interested, but the problem with her was the time mm -hmm. that she she still she's still working. Yes, at this uh, time, and she doesn't even have good conditions for connecting. But maybe in, you know, when I send her the video and she can watch it uh, during the weekend and. Then we may agree something. We may, may make some adaptations, some changes, also for Jorge, because I I thought this time would be good for Jorge. Yes, but maybe it's it's a little bit too early for Jorge. Yes, yeah. Uh, um, but we are flexible, and we do not have a problem if yes. we yeah. if we find a. A better time. I'm sure that you will have students, and I and I know that there are many students that have asked me about the textbook, where they could find it, and and they have um, registered on the course online. But probably, it, and this happens to every course that we organize. The first day, it's very difficult for people to become familiar with the new technologies that we use. It's it's very new for them too, yes? And uh, who knows? I think this could work, but I can tell you for sure that this, this first uh, lesson is outstanding. You know, what you have done, what you have prepared, with the with the presentations, the, the PowerPoint presentations, but not only with words, but even also with graphs, with everything. It's something, uh, how to say, chudovo. Chudovo. 
Yes, and actually we have much more. <laughs> so, more, we, but we should keep it, you know, yeah. for the next um, for the next lectures because I'm sure that now when people get to know get to know this, it will work. This video of yours, uh, uh, Julia and I, we can we can make it public on YouTube if you like. Yes. Yeah. yeah why not? what we what we are doing is that we are broadcasting this live but it's not made public mm -hmm. it's broadcast live but only for those who have the link mm -hmm. for instance those who have registered in the course but if you like if you wish we can make your course uh, public as, yeah. as as you like you can think about it yes we yeah. I'm, I'm sure it will have many, many visits. Yeah, yeah, it would be nice that uh, the lessons will prepare uh, be uh, public and that uh, the people who want to catch up, but maybe they uh, don't uh, have all the time that is necessary for the course, but they'd like to uh, learn something from them that it's available for them. So. Okay, yeah, so sure. something, something for the people, because I think I can speak for the students. They want to know you better, Yulia and I. They want to know who you are and, uh, you know, where you come from, why you do this. Something about you, you know? You, yeah, you're we planned it. Actually, yeah, we planned this uh, kind of stuff. So, uh, Anya, maybe you start? Okay, uh, as you know, my name is Anne. <laughs> I'm 20, <clears throat> 27 years old. Uh, I live in Ukraine, in the southern part. It is a beautiful city which is stands on two rivers, uh, which name is Nikolaev. It is uh, near Odessa. So I live here. Uh, I love my city very much. Um, <clears throat> I walk. <laughs> and and uh, did you go to Odessa often? Or often, yes, I go to Odessa often because uh, in the summer we have rest on the seaside in Odessa. Uh, maybe some cafe, restaurants, uh, everything <laughs> in Odessa. I have a lot of friends there. I also have a lot of friends in Kiev, like Yulia, <laughs> and my uh, friends from university because I uh, uh, graduated from the university in Kiev. Uh -huh. uh, criminal law is my specification. <laughs> criminal <laughs> law. Criminal. So, so, so you deal with criminals? No, I don't deal with criminals. I all. I only. Uh, learned in university on criminal law. <laughs> Unfortunately, or maybe, or maybe, maybe, maybe it is the best way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I work. I work in a company, a real estate company. And you sell property to Ukrainians or also to foreigners? Both. Is, is it legal now to for foreigners to buy property in Ukraine? Yes, property, yes, but not the land. Ah, so 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 if you buy an apartment, for instance, you can buy it. Of yes. course, I can sell you. But you, you cannot buy the land where the apartment is built. Yes. How is that? Because when you buy an apartment, you usually also are buying one part of the land. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are right. And how do you do then? Because I remember in the past, the first time I went to Romania, it was like uh, eighteen years ago, mm -hmm. and it it was not it was the same like in in Ukraine. It was not possible to buy land for foreigners. So if you wanted to buy an apartment, mm -hmm. you, you and Special contract that you need to make. Uh, so, if you want to buy an apartment or flat, for example, you buy the flat. You, for example, for instance, you are a foreigner. You buy the flat and you can leave it. 
uh, leaving it and everything is okay because uh, there are uh, there are a lot of uh, condominium for example or uh, um, fl uh, or flat in cities uh, the owner of the land is uh, municipal um, government of the city i see so, Municipality, yes, municipal land it is. But if you want, uh, if you are a foreigner and you want to be, for example, a farmer, a yeah. farmer, you can't buy the land because the land is a national uh, uh, something, um, national value, yes, uh, for you. You know, Anne, that before you join the European Union, mm -hmm. yes. They will, they will make uh, Ukraine change those laws. Yes, I you know. know. Allow the the rich uh, farmers mm -hmm. from Germany to buy Ukrainian land. Yeah, no, not to join. They join so that they receive all the subsidies. Mm -hmm. But now, but now you can uh, rent the land. For example, on forty-five years. Yes, in forty-five years, uh, forty-five years, you can rent the land. And, and one more question. I, I, um, it's about the prices. Yes, mm -hmm. because for a foreigner, how, how much does an apartment cost in Ukraine? It depends on uh, a lot of things. For example, with repairings or without repairings, uh, in um, where is it? In the center, or in the city center, or or it's uh, in another region. Is it a capital or is it as a common city? For example, in the southern Ukraine. Uh, so it depends. So Nikolaev is a small place in Ukraine, right? Yeah. Life is not very big city. Uh, there are, if, um, I guess, sixty or fifty thousand. Uh, no, 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 five hundred thousand of people live there. Wow! And you say it's not big? Yes, it is not big. Not big such as Odessa or Kiev. But it's half a million people there. Half a million people. Mm -hmm. Wow! It's really big. So an apartment must be really expensive there. Mm, a one room flat will cost about twenty-five or thirty thousand of euros. And and uh, are there many foreigners who are buying now apartments there or not? Uh, not so many, but uh, of course uh, foreigners uh, ask for. And where, where do they come from? The majority of foreigners that are interested in, in the Ukrainian property in your firm, where do they come from? Uh, from, uh, uh, from Greece, for example, from Germany, from Italy. Mm -hmm. and people. When, when you deal with them, do you have special people within your firm that uh, deal specially with foreigners or any of the people who work there, they, they deal with them? Uh, on our firm, uh, everybody can speak uh, English. That's why we can help them to choose their apartment. And then uh, on the deal, it will be a notarius and uh, notarius will help them to make the deal. Mm -hmm. And, and how about uh, Yulia? So what do you do? Do you, do you also work in, in, in real estate, like uh, Anne? Uh, no, actually I come from a totally different sphere. So I majored in uh, the Ukrainian language, literature and English. What is really interesting is that uh, I started teaching while I was studying at the university. We had our speaking club, we had uh, 50 students graduated from our courses that I taught. And um, uh, after uh, graduation, I decided to, to join the IT sphere because some of my <laughs> friends invited me over. I ended up uh, um, working as a project manager 
over the last uh, three years, this is my uh, full-time job. I'm working as a project manager and uh, teaching is my hobby at the moment. So this is something that I do for pleasure. You know, there are people contacting me now that they said that they are interested in participating in your course because they, they are watching it on YouTube. And, and they say that the problem for them that they didn't join in the beginning is because of the time. That it's at the same time when they have other classes or other uh, other obligations. Yes, but uh, I'm sure that this, I think it's a great thing. So a final message for the future students, for the potential students, what would you tell them about why they should take this course? You guys, this is very serious. Of course it's not. So <laughs> what I should say is that, uh, guys, please join. It's uh, interesting and excited because you know that when you're learning a language, the most important thing is that you like. Those are the lessons that you like speaking to people at those lessons. We would like to make it something in between hobby and a very useful hobby. Please come join. Uh, we promise you're gonna like it. Yes, it, it's hobby and not only hobby. You see, because the questions I asked them were about business already. Because I'm thinking already about business in Ukraine. What, and what would you tell people about the potential for business in Ukraine? Every developing country yeah. uh, have a lot of opportunities for business. So, have you heard about the blue ocean theory? No. No. So this theory, very nice one, by the way. It tells about the potential of the developing countries. So, the conflict in Ukraine. It gets uh, really nice for a lot of foreigners because lots of people are afraid and they have less competition. Very big market, yeah. Because even with the um, occupied territories, the current uh, uh, the Ukrainian governments, it's a lot. So there are millions of people with a very nice demand. Unfortunately, with a lot of gray market at the moment, that the official statistics tells much less. So when you're reading the ratings, you can see that Ukraine is somewhere in between the African countries. But when our clients, for example, come to Ukraine, we have a lot of clients visiting um, all the time. So you'll see the booked hotels and uh, those clients say that they never expected to see what they see in Ukraine because so, and so then they start working here but don't uh, really want to share it because you know if it gets popular they will have less opportunities so maybe we shouldn't discuss this publicly in these online videos maybe we should discuss only among ourselves and uh, the confidential information for ourselves. So this is not confidential. This is uh, this is something we are Ukrainians interested. In. <coughs> we just started to advertise our country. We would like to be more open, uh, not only in terms of the economics, but also in terms of culture. But we have started doing a very nice job here. You'll like, see. This is also very important. Uh, I want to say to all the investors, uh, come to Ukraine and invest in our business and our economy. <laughs> so, but, but for universities, you say that universities come to, to Ukraine. Uh, I, 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 from what I've spoken to, to some people in Ukrainian universities, they say that there are not many students in Ukraine. They were complaining that the number of young people in Ukraine, the number of university students is declining and uh, it's difficult for them. I 
think it's good because previously we have too many universities in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. so it was hard to find, so even to become a, I don't know, the bus driver, they would require you to have a higher education. So this is a paradox about you. Yes, yeah, or even two diplomas. And then, <coughs> and now it's, we are doing good because we are reforming our educational system at the moment. We're going to have less universities, but we will concentrate on their quality. Quality, yes. That, uh, yeah, so that we have more universities like, like my university or like the Polytechnic University. They are very nice and uh, the people who graduate from them, they uh, are very welcome uh, in other European uh, universities. We have a lot of friends who are like invited to the master's degree or to the PhD uh, in Germany, uh, in, the, in, in Norway and other countries. So that's what we are doing now. Concentrating on quality, not the quantity. Yes. And and also, the desire to learn. Yes. And you, you mentioned, Julia, this uh, blue ocean theory, right? That saying that the, the conflict in Ukraine can mean greater business opportunities for those who have the courage to invest in that country. Yes, um, not only the courage. So business is never about the courage. Business is about the profit. If you do the calculations, if you consider the risks, the political risks, it's going to bring you a lot of profit. So this is business. Mm -hmm. Also, <laughs> you know, this. What we have an, now a student. Uh, from, from Romania, Georgiana Paduraru. Welcome. Hello, please. Nice please. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Awesome. Could you introduce yourself, please? Well, my name is Georgiana Paduraru. Um, for now, I'm a student at um, International Studies of Development at University Alexandri on Fuda from Yash. And um, I, I, I like to see what have, what uh, is about this course and I would like to participate in it. Yeah, and you're really welcome here. Thank you. Yes, and, and uh, she was mentioning some difficulties with the time of the course, but this is our first attempt, our first uh, lesson, and we can adapt to the demand from students, right? How do you pass the time? We can adjust. Okay. So do, do we have flexibility, right, Julia? Of course. So this would be a good thing. I'm sure you know that we will be able to have a small group of very interested students that will allow us to to try the new system. To, but by the way, this blue ocean theory that you mentioned, it interests me very much. This idea that the conflict, they are coming on a business opportunity for some, yes? But my, my question was about these regions, these eastern regions of uh, where the conflict is more severe, yes? It's uh, Donetsk and Luhansk, yes? And Crimea. Would it be possible also to, to, to make agreements there with people there, to do business there? With the so, universities, for instance? Uh, so this is the risk not worth taking. Yes. Uh, we, we really hope that it will change in the nearest future, but we need to be honest. So we are not controlling those territories. Neither government controls these territories. So uh, we recommend not to visit them. Asian uh, um, stabilizes. It is dangerous, though. 
but anyway but we could do some online business or something like something that we do now mm. without much risk not visiting them but maybe but i don't know put uh, the people who will take part <coughs> under the risk i see so let's let's wait uh let's work on it let's wait for those people to be able to join us because now uh, of course, it, it will be okay for us if these people are attracted, that uh, they are joining, they are speaking, then uh, we will put them under real danger and this is, this is not, not our purpose, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that they will be able to watch it on YouTube. Uh, may I ask uh, a question to Georgiana because I think... Uh, <laughs> It is not very interesting for her to listen to this. Georgiana, can you tell us about yourself? We want to get acquainted with you and maybe uh, do you have previous experience in learning Ukrainian or some another Slavic language? It is very important for us. No, I, I never knew somebody from Ukraine and I never was in Ukraine. And, um, if, if this is what you asked me, it's because I didn't understand very well your your question because the sound is not so good. Mm -hmm. That's why it happens only when you, when you speak. The others I, I hear very good, but you I don't feel so good when you speak. But what I understood, what I think you asked me is if I know from somebody from Ukraine. I, I never meet somebody from Ukraine. I never no, no, but they, they ask you, Georgiana, about you, and I think Georgiana will be a very interesting case for for someone like Julia because Georgiana also studied languages, right? Yes, I studied English and German. She studied English in, and German, and now she she studying international development, right? Yes. And and the I put I put you in mute, Julia, but you can remove the, the the mute now to speak because in order to increase the quality of sound, yeah. I put some of the people in mute when when Georgiana said she couldn't hear. But um, Julia, did you know that you once taught at uh, Georgiana's university? Do you remember? Ah, oh, you mean uh, that I was uh, in a part of uh, a discussion? I saw I saw some pictures there on your profile on Eurosci. Yes, the, the, there is a link there to this event where you participated, and and there are some pictures. So uh, Georgiana, she knows the place probably, or I I don't know. She knows it. Yes, I think so. It's in the Rome Telecom building in Yash, yeah. and uh, Julia was there. Yeah, and I actually worked was... at Rome Telecom a few years back. You, you, you see that, uh, Georgiana, the world is very small. Yes, it is. Yes. But you can when you when you enter the website, you already have an account on the website, right, Georgiana? Yeah. And you can look at um, Julia's uh, profile page, and there will be links to her activities that she participated. And you can see the pictures when she was in Yash in Rome Telecom. Because Yash, where you study, is a very international place. Yeah. And uh, at Julia is also very international. There are many foreign students at uh, my university and uh, other universities. Yes. So, <clears throat> good. I, I think the, the test is very satisfactory for the first day. You, you, you arrived in, in the last moment, uh, Georgiana, but you can watch the whole, uh, the whole lesson online and then we can discuss. Okay. My Facebook, all of us, 
about po time possibilities, we should also discuss with Jorge. Jorge is yes. a me Mexican. In, in, I learned one word in Ukrainian in this book, in Shevchuk's book, in the first lesson. They, 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 I think they have the, the word uh, at stake. Yes, because it's with the, with the letters that you learn in the first lesson, right? Yes. And uh, he's, he's from Mexico, but he speaks Ukrainian like an Ukrainian person. Yeah. To me, when I hear him, it's, it's like Yulia or Anne. It, it's the same thing. It's something amazing, yes? And what Yulia told us is that if you take her course now, in, in a few months, you will be able to speak like Jorge. Wow. <laughs> you, you, you just need to, to learn like a few minutes per day, 15 minutes per day or so, and you will be able to speak uh, Ukrainian. And moreover, you, Georgiana, because you studied languages and you already have some... some um, background already well i have to recognize that i wasn't such a good talent in uh, in the faculty i i, I really wasn't that interested in all the courses but now it, it was very it's a different uh, field like, learn, and it's very interesting <laughs> thank you thank you Julia. and i hope i i'll be able to to learn Ukrainian and I wish this this thing thank you yes. for the opportunity. And I think that Ukrainian will be important for Georgiana's course now that she is doing international development. Yes. And now Ukraine is at the center of interest related to development. It's the the new member of the European family that uh, is probably the one that will grow fast faster in the in the coming years. So it's a it's a good thing. Okay, Julia. So I think you should say goodbye to people to to tell them to I don't know how, how do you say goodbye in, in Ukraine? Dobre. Okay. So, uh, thanks a lot for listening to us. Please uh, contact us, join our course, and uh, it would be nice to hear something like we've just heard about Georgiana, because for us it's important to know about your background so that we adapt our course as soon as possible to your need, right? Because like my course, Sorana's course, or Diego course. It's our course, it will be our collaboration. It's a group work, yes. And I'm sure it's gonna be exciting and we'll have a lot of fun. Jakuyu. Jakuyu. <laughs> okay, yeah. Thank you all also very much for this course, you know. This course with you and Julia together in tandem has been amazing because this is what I have never seen on YouTube on any course. When you were discussing, you and her and, and role playing, and when you uh, prepare different presentations, and it, it was something amazing. I really thank you very much. I must say that this uh, is an act of generosity from you. You, you, you are not only very brave to organize this thing for the same t for the first time, but also very generous, and we are really grateful. I think Georgiana could say the same. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you both very much. Thank you guys, thank you. Looking forward to teaching you. Bye. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Папа. Папа, давай. Папа, давай, пасик.